But when you cross the water line, where there's a water stream, which there's one right here, that causes them to pull toward each other and line up. And that's how we find water. And so what we'll do is we'll get several different directions and we'll mark it out so that we know where this stream is obviously coming down out of the mountain here. And where's the other streams coming into it? That's the point that I'm always looking for. If I can find where two streams are meeting, that's the dig spot. Hi everyone, this is Jeff Welch here at the Welch Family Homestead and today we're going to be talking about something that is totally a different subject than what I normally would talk about and that's about finding water on your property because water is so important for your survival and also especially if you have a farm not only for you but for your animals and maybe even for irrigation. One of the things that I'm going to be doing here on the farm is I'm going to be looking for some springs that are higher up in elevation so that I can dig them out and I can actually find me a good new spring that I can utilize for drinking water for some future projects that we're going to be doing here on the farm. As you know, we have plenty of water. This is a lake that I have here on the farm and it's got about 6.2 million gallons of reservoir in it. And in the fall season, in the autumn, it's the best time to look for a good viable stream. Why? Because when you're looking for water in the fall season, there's several different factors that fall into your advantage. One of those is that you have less undergrowth and weeds to worry about. You can see more clearly. Obviously, uh, it's still warm enough that, that snakes are out. You can see the snakes if a little better this time of year than you could in the summertime when the undergrowth is all covering up your, your legs and you can't see where you're walking. This time of year is the best time to look for uh, new water sources also because uh, this is usually that time of year that you have a semi drought or even a, a massive drought during this time of year so you know if the water table is down and it's down right now a little bit here in the western North Carolina mountains we haven't had a lot of rain uh, over the last couple of months and that's normal for us this time of year we have about 60 plus inches of rain per year here which is a lot but most of that is in the earlier months of the year throughout the uh, to about mid-June, July. This year we had good rain all the way up until actually uh, August. And, uh, and then it started slacking off. And right now we have a lower water table. Everything's a little bit dry right now. We need rain. But at the same time, it's a perfect time to find a viable spring. Why? Because you know if the water table's down and, and it's, it's dry, but yet you find a good stream you know that's a stream that's going to last even through the drought periods. That's a stream that's still going to be running when we're not having a lot of rain. And that's the kind of streams you want when you're looking for water. One of the ways I look for water, and some of you uh, are going to be skeptics about this, I grew up believing in these. This is what we call uh, divining rods. And this is two copper uh, wires, basically number four copper. And, um, and I basically ground wire we call it ground wire but it's good copper good sturdy copper and I hold it in my hands and if I'm over if I'm over water what happens is is they will cross sometimes they'll go just like this and when I'm not over water they're like this and you say how could that actually be we hear a lot of skeptics saying it's impossible the earth has its own magnetic uh, forces as we know there's a there's a magnetic north pole, there's a magnetic, magnetic south pole, the equator. Everything is detectable when we call out our Earth's dynamics, right? We understand that very well. However, how do you find water? I believe that is something they've never been able to figure out 100%. I believe it has something to do with magnetics. It could have something to do with frequencies. But I do know this. If you find water with these right here and I can find your water line in your yard I can find a water line on your farm if you have a drain pipe coming out of your house to a septic system 
I can find it if I tell you to keep flushing a toilet or to keep water running down your drain so I can find that that line it could be buried for 50 years but if there's water running through that line I can use these and I can find that that line some people call these witch sticks I don't call them witch sticks I call them dividing rods if you want to call them witch sticks you can there's no sorcery to this at all in my opinion it's physics it's science it has to do with the uh, magnetic um, uh, ability and resonance of the earth but it definitely has nothing to do with witchcraft or anything like that now some of you are going to put comments on here tell me why this is not true and why it's no, not possible but I can tell you my father was a builder my grandfather did this my father did this I do it my father would do it with peach limbs and he would take a, a y-shaped peach limb and he would hold on to the y section let the single stem go, go out he don't hold on to it a certain way and when he got near water that end of that peach limb would go down and I have seen it go down so hard that it would twist the bark off of that limb where he was holding it. So I know that there's methods that work. And, um, and can anyone do it? I think anyone could do it. I think there is a possibility that some people get in their mind they can't do it or it's not true, it's not capable of being done, or they just don't know how to hold it to where it will actually work. And we used these right here to find water lines on the farm many many times so that we could follow that water line and eventually find where that leak was we'd use these every time before we allowed a machine to set up and start drilling or boring for that well every time why because we believed in what this was able to do we've seen it work so many times so now let's get with it and let's see if we can find some water There's water right here. So you see how those crossed right here. I was holding them steady. And actually what I try to do is I hold them in that part of my hand. Right here. Right here. They have ability to move. And when there's two of them, they have the ability to come toward each other. So what I do because there's so much water up here in the mountains. I always try to hold it slightly so that it's trying to go apart instead of trying to hold it in the middle. I, and I never try to pull it toward the center because I don't want a false reading. The magnetics from the earth or whatever the uh, frequencies are from the earth could be a, a voltage from the earth because I know that when you put a, a voltmeter on any of the trees you're going to get a reading. The earth has its own, own charge to it. And uh, so I pick up anywhere from 1.5 to almost 3 volts when I test a tree, which is normal. And that's what makes your plants grow so well, is, is the voltage or the amps that's coming through it. So that is a natural frequency, a nat natural energy that's coming from the earth. It's the way God made it. So as I'm coming up through here, I'm doing everything I possibly can to hold them apart, to keep the tips from coming toward each other. But when you cross the water line, where there's a water stream, which there's one right here, that causes them to pull toward each other and line up. And that's how we find water. And so what we do is we'll get several different directions and we'll mark it out so that we know where this stream is obviously coming down out of the mountain here and where's the other streams coming into it that's the point that i'm always looking for if i can find where two streams are meeting that's the dig spot if i'm digging a well now if i'm digging out a spring where i'm trying to dig back into the bank and then build a reservoir around it which is the case here it's going to be somewhere up through here that I'm going to dig back into the bank and I'm going to get to where that spring is coming out up about so high above where I want to dig into back level okay so then after I have that water established I'm going to clean up the bank really nice then I'm going to come in with some cement cement the bottom 
lay some rock or lay some brick or block around it, create a reservoir, have a good place for that water to catch. Now, obviously we want to build a good top around it so it will keep the critters out. We don't want any mice to get in there. We don't want any possums or anything else to crawl up inside there looking for a warm spot because if there's water running in the winter time and there's a cover over it, that area underneath there is going to be warmer than it is outside of that. It's just natural because the earth itself is going to average if we dig down here somewhere around 56 degrees year round. And that's its own thermal mass. It's, it's insulated. Now you notice that I said earlier that water is found around poplar trees because poplar trees around this area here in the southeast they look for the water. And a poplar tree's root system doesn't go that deep. So if it's finding water and poplars love that water in the ground, you can pretty much guarantee that there's water in the ground near a grove of poplars. And this area where I'm at right here, this whole hillside is covered with poplars, which means that stream is coming down. Most likely there's so much dirt on top of a rock surface under this dirt. It's very rocky under it. And that stream is coming down. If all this dirt was removed, you'd see water coming down off the rocks, making a stream underneath where I'm standing right now. But this right here works. This is what we call a divining rod. You can be the uh, skeptic and say that it doesn't, but I can guarantee you this works. Now, I welcome you to subscribe to us here at the Welch Family Homestead. We appreciate all our subscribers. Our subscriber list is definitely moving up. And, um, and we are uh, growing. Our channel is growing. I appreciate all of you who have come back over and over and over and watched our videos. And even going back to some of our older videos and watched them as well. Thank you. That helps us so much. Uh, we're hoping that our channel will eventually get to the point where it's monetized enough. Uh, through the AdSense, through the Google ads that take place here because Google owns YouTube. We, uh, we hope that it gets to the point where our YouTube channel uh, basically is, is doing well enough that we can uh, uh, subsidize some of the needs for the farm. So thank you very much for being a supporter by just watching our videos. It helps us so much. And please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have subscribed, thank you for coming back. God bless you. This is Jeff Welch signing off.